Drills Talk, Drills Talk, episode 53. In this episode, we're going to discuss the top three ways to find someone doing better. And this is based on a blog I wrote in the past entitled Finding Someone Doing Better. It's a little tough to admit that someone's doing a little better than you or a lot better than you, but I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. I am going to show you how to humble yourself without quite humbling yourself or giving you enough reason to humble yourself to where it's not that big a deal. And I know it can be tough for a lot of A-type personalities, which is basically who watches my videos. So let's calm down. Let's get ready to do something we don't like to do with an incentive. Let's go. Yo, Drills. Created by the great wizard of the new world. Drills Talk, Drills Talk, episode 53. In this episode, we're going to discuss the top three ways to find someone doing better. But before we get started, please like, subscribe, share, comment, do whatever you would like to do. I appreciate all of it. Um, a subscribe definitely helps me out. A watch helps me out. A like helps me out. Whatever you would like to do is cool. Tell your friends, tell somebody in your family that may like, you know, what I provide and it's all appreciated. Uh, every Monday here, we have a new blog. Every Wednesday, a new Drills Talk, new vlog. Every Friday is a new instrumental produced by yours truly. It's a great channel to follow. I appreciate you guys. Let's get started. Number one. Number one is humble yourself. And, you know, humble, humble. You know, you don't have to really, really, like, feel less than to do what I'm about to do or about to tell you to do. Um, you're basically going to understand and be real with yourself and say, there's people out there doing a lot better than me. There's people out there doing a little better than me. And if they were in my circle, I can be doing a little better than what I'm doing right now. How does that sound? That's it's a little, a little better than, you know, just humble yourself, go sit in the corner and ask for help. No, that's not what we're doing. We're going to admit though, that we're not exactly where we want to be and that there are people who can help us to get there more efficiently, more effectively, and have the ability to stay there when we get there. So when you humble yourself, you allow yourself to say, okay, this is what I'm lacking. Um, this is what I can do better in. These are some of the questions I have no idea what the answer is. Now you know exactly what type of person you need to go seek and find, you know, find out, okay, hey, maybe we won't be the best of friends. Maybe you won't even be a mentor, but can I bounce an idea or two off of you every now and then? Can I ask you a question or two if I come to you with, you know, a, a good thought process? I've thought this out already. I've had these questions. I have what I think the answer is. I'm just going to throw that to you and you, you know, you can tell me what you think every now and then. How does that sound? Most people who are doing well would love to see a person that has aspirations to do well and has the gumption to ask for help. And we'll say that I'm going to come to you with a well thought out process, a well thought out, you know, plan or, or a well thought out list of questions. It's, it's so great to see because most of the people that come to them are all questions, no thought process, no idea what the answer could be. Didn't try anything. Don't have any ideas. That's something that they can't stand because now you just want, want, want. If you're coming to them with stuff, Maybe you'll give them an idea if one of your answers are, you know, close to what should be the answer. Maybe that'll trigger something on memory and say, hey, yeah, that's close. I remember this time I and then they can help you out with the scenario, real life scenario, rather than the things that you're thinking up. And it can be a more of a natural conversation because it's not all on them who, you know, one probably don't want to be a mentor, would rather be more of a, you know, a friend or an associate every now and then you ask them a couple of questions. They see how you're doing. You ask how they're doing. But that all comes from humbling yourself and understanding that you're not quite where you want to be. It's not that big a deal. We can do this, right? Well, let's get to going. Let's try. Number two. Number two is where do you want to be in five years? So after you've humbled yourself and you've been real with yourself, you have to know exactly where you want to be to weed out the people that you don't need assisting you at this time. So if I want to be somewhere in five years 
and my circle are all a year or more behind me, that's telling me that I need to find somebody doing better. It's cool. It feels good being the one doing the best in your group. But if you are, it's not a good sign for you. It's a great sign for the others that's in your group because they can still use you as the someone doing better. But you have no one to go to. You only have the you you want to be. But what's even better than just the you you want to be is to actually have a person, a living person or people that are where you would like to be in five years or more. And have them in your circle or, you know, every now and then call, just like I mentioned before. The benefit of that is you're going to go through things that you have no idea you're going to encounter. And they've already encountered them and, and accomplished what they wanted to accomplish anyway. So they can give you the, the playbook of, you know, hey, when you encounter this, this problem is going to happen. You're going to feel like this. You may want to quit, but don't. This is what I did. You can try it or you can do something similar. It may help you through that, you know, that roadblock that you're going to run into. It's inevitable. But, you know, something that you didn't know. OK, well, I want to buy a house. I want to have a nice car. I want to. Is it OK? Um, how's your credit? And you have no idea and you don't know why it's so important and you don't know how to build it because you have no idea what your score is right now anyway. So these are questions that they can answer. Hey, you want to have a nice house. One, you're going to have to have a nice income. You're going to have to have decent savings and you're going to have to have a great credit score. So now you know these things. OK, well, this is where I want to be in five years. So I got about four and a half years to build up my credit to build up a savings, to make sure that my income, you know, matches what a person that would qualify for a home loan of the size I want would need to make. And now you know this stuff. And now you have a better idea of what it'll take to get where you want to be in five years. And it's not just aspirations. It's a huge step forward. And it's something that a lot of us are missing. And then we get bombarded with this stuff five years later, it takes us another four and a half, five years to get exactly where we want to be. Let's prevent that. Number three. Number three is use the internet. Using the internet will definitely show you the benefit of finding somebody doing better. And it will help you get access to the people who are doing better. A lot of people are touchable nowadays. You can talk to people you don't think you have any I you know any chance of talking to, and you can reach them via email, you can reach them via direct message, or you know, any it's plenty of ways. Some people even have their numbers listed. Maybe they won't answer, but you can leave a message. And if it's a you know well thought out message, you may get a call back. In addition, if you are in somewhere, some rural area, and you don't feel that anybody around you is doing better. The internet allows you to find people who are, you know, maybe across the world, but doing something similar to what you want to do. Maybe you're in a rural place and you want to, you know, bring a little of the city where you are and how you're going to do that. Well, you may want to look up, you know, different news stories of people who live in rural areas and we're building out different buildings and things like that to bring a little bit of the city to their rural area and reach out to those people. No, you may not be best friends, but you have similar aspirations and they can remember back when they were you and how they would have loved to have somebody to reach out to and somebody to ask a couple of questions to. And now they can be that person. And you will be so thankful for, for seeing that person and finding that person. You'll then pay it forward and be that person for someone else. And it just keeps on going and going. It's not a big deal to ask for assistance, to ask for guidance. You don't want to put pressure on the people that you're asking, but don't feel bad for asking. There's people out there who are dying to help you. And there's people out there who will go the extra step for a stranger because the people who are surrounding them, they won't take a half step forward. So just to see ambition triggers their wants. And, and their eagerness to help you where you are or, or to get where you want to be. So these top three reasons were to explain exactly why it's okay to temporarily 
humble ourselves and understand that we're not quite where we want to be. And there's nothing wrong with reaching out for a little help to get there. Drills Talk, episode 53. These are the top three ways to find someone doing better. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. It's drills.com. Check this out. It's drills.